hear from you. I heard that in a previous year, uh, one of your colleagues had done some exercises with you of a similar vein. So this will be interactive. Please don't make me call for Ferris Bueller. Um, when we look at this image, what do we think that we're looking at? Don't raise your hand, just shout. New England, anything else? Ah, someone said the Abenaki homeland. Very good. So this water painting was done by one of our artists, Amy Hook Therian. It is a watercolor aerial view of Ndakana. Okay, let's take a moment and I'm gonna work through that word with you guys. If you are speaking to students, we had that moment at the beginning where Susie did a land acknowledgement. One of the things you noticed is that she stressed that we were in the Abenaki homeland. She didn't give reference to herself. It's very important when you do land acknowledgements, you start off talking about the people and where you are, but you do that before you mention the institution, before what you're going to get into today, and you don't make it a personal moment about yourself. It is about bringing honor to what has happened and to the people that still remain here. So I would like to pose a small challenge to you to try and incorporate this word into your lectures. Now, some people will suggest, oh, I'll just copy what someone else did. It's very important that you come up with something for you and for what you're doing that day. If you're reading the same thing 20 times, does that hold meaning anymore? Does it? So let's work through how to say this word together, okay? The N is very silent. You don't really wanna say it. Abenaki is a non-labial language. That means we don't really want to move our lips when we say anything. But as English speakers, for most of us, it's going to be really hard, and that's okay. We'll struggle a little bit. We'll work through it. So let's say it together. I'll say it slowly first. It's first n, da, kin, na. Okay, now everyone together. N, da, kin, na. Very good, awesome, you're getting there, excellent. So I really like this comparison because what's one of the big differences between this watercolor map and then to the right is actually a map that I designed in ArcGIS on an online so or computer software. What's a huge difference between the two? Borders. So borders are imaginary lines. They don't really exist. They're socio-political in nature, and they were imposed on us. And if you look, I have this, this map, just so you know, is a map of the headquarters of the tribes. We, the Abenaki do not have a reservation in the United States. Up in Canada, you'll see that I've marked the reservations there of Odenak and Wolanak. But here are these orange squares are of the four Abenaki tribes that have been recognized in Vermont. And we'll get into recognition in a minute. But this is where their headquarters are located. We don't have a singular boundary where everyone has to live. And if you look at it, is there maybe a problem that one of these groups may have that's unique to them and not the others? When we talk about borders, yeah? Ones in two states, yeah, very good. So the Kawasuk Abenaki tribe straddles the border between Vermont and New Hampshire. What does that do? When you grow up in a culture that doesn't believe in these kinds of ideas, and then another culture comes in and tries to force it upon you, and then you grow up landlocked by that dominant culture, when you have to go for something like recognition, to legally prove yourself, to ha legally have the ability to self-identify, what does that do? That, that comes into so many issues around identity politics. What if, no, let me say this a little blunter. The only Abenaki tribes in the United States that have recognition reside in Vermont. There are Abenaki tribes and people who are Abenaki that do not belong to a tribe that do not have recognition, but legally they can't say that. And it's a really complicated issue that we'll get into in a couple of slides. So there's a whole, just by bringing up maps, and I do want you to know you'll all get a copy of this map. 
uh, we're having you brainstorm on these worksheets and then as you're done with the worksheets, you know, you'll hold up the worksheet and we have some lovely helpers uh, who are going to swap out the worksheets for the maps. Um, but this is a great teaching tool. What are some other topics just by using these maps that we can think of to integrate it into other things about modern, oh, I don't want to give it away. What are some other things we can talk of by looking at the map that are either in our classrooms or going around in society right now? Water. Water, okay. Power, electricity. Do we maybe have a conflict with borders going on? Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of things you can bring into this. So another thing that I really want to stress to you guys is this high school, South Burlington High School, that South Burlington School and District. What are you right next to? <coughs> Lake Champlain. But of course, to us, it's not Lake Champlain. For us, it's Bitabagua. Now, I've put a picture of the lake. Does anyone want to try and guess what our translation into English? What do you think we, our word for the lake means? Brave guesses, no judgment. Big water, body of water. Okay, wall, life. Okay, really good guesses. Um, so, the first bit of it does. Um, when you get into just the word for lake with no context, it literally means big round pond. So if someone over here was it, you maybe who said it? Someone over here said something about ponds. Um, so that's a really good guess, but Bitabagua is the lake in between. It's not a divider. It's not typically how we think of lakes. It's not an economic resource. It's not for industry. It's not to get you from two, but places. It's the lake between the Abenakis on this side of the St. Lawrence and the other side of the St. Lawrence. It's an Abenak it's a, the lake in between, you know, us and the Mohawks. It's the lake in between you and your cousins. It's a uniter, it's not a divider. Actually, I want to go back and teach you how to say this, okay? Because again, you're here. You should know how to say it. I'm sure you take your classes to the lake. I'm sure you walk around the waterfront because it's beautiful. Who wouldn't? So very slowly, I know it's big and scary, but if you want to say it with me, it's bit, a, ba, qua. Okay, put it together. Bit, ta, a, qua. Bit of agua. See, it's not that hard. So I mentioned the concept of recognition, and again, we do have longer professional development um, opportunities available, but very briefly, if nothing else, Please know this, the current state of affairs of Vermont, there are four Abenaki tribes that are legally recognized. It doesn't mean we're the only Abenaki, that's not true.